morning, everybody. How are you? Good. 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 Thank you. Okay. Um, you know what? I, I'm really struggling here on stage because several different things. The first one is that all the pitches before mine have been great. And I, yeah, you know, I, I'm struggling about that. That's the, the first reason. And the second and, and most important reason is that I'm the, the man in the middle. Uh, I, I, yeah, you, you, I, I get a special talent for being the man in the middle. And, and, and that talent, it's a huge disaster because what comes after me is music, food, and drinks. So uh, I think that the, the best way of impacting you today is just being brief. <laughs> so I'll, I'll try to do that, okay? Um, well, my, my pitch today is about creative capital and why they have failed. Because you always read on papers that entrepreneurs fail, that uh, entrepreneurs, we don't know how to pitch, we don't know how to raise capital, we don't know how to sell. But what about failure in venture capitalists? They fail big time, much, much more than entrepreneurs, believe me. And, and there's, there's, there's one reason. And, and that reason, uh, it's something related uh, to the history and something related to the fallacy of security. Um, please, let me, let me introduce you, George Doriot. George, the audience. Um, Americans, North Americans says that they invented, they started the venture capitalist market with George Doriot. George was a French guy, born in Paris, then uh, it was an, he was an immigrant and, and studied in Harvard Business School in North America in Boston. And he founded a company called American Research and Development Corporation. Do they know this company? Do you know this company? Uh, it was a company created for, uh, to, to um, encourage the private sector to invest in companies run by uh, veterans from the World War II. It was like a non-profit organization. Well, they, they, they wanted to have a lot of profit, but wanted also to, to get all that soldiers into the market. A great idea. Um, and, and this guy, uh, managed to do that first home run. Do you know Digital, this company? Was the first company creating home PCs, home, home computers. Uh, the company uh, run by Doriot invested $70,000 70, uh, in the company. And do you know how much uh, percentage of the, how, much, how many shares he get? 70%. Almost everything, almost all the company. Uh, it was a, a home run, believe me, because when this company went public, the investors get 500 times their investment. It's a very good investment. In just, look, from 1957 till 1978, 11 years. Do a simple math. It's incredible. Um, I don't agree with them, and this is the first failure of venture capitalists. Uh, market because you know this sounds like the American the, 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 the American dream a French immigrant studied in a business school with a lot of you know businesses running investing and getting a huge success uh, I disagree I disagree big time uh, I got a couple of goals today the, the first one was talking about the fallacy of security here but the second one is a claim and I do apologize for the claim, because may, you know, want somebody, but the, his, the history is that the first hand run was made by a Spanish. Yeah? Woo! Woo! Come on! <laughs> the, can, you, can you remember Isabel I de Castilla? And I won't translate the name because I said George and not Jorge. Isabel I de Castilla didn't study in a business school. He was queen. When, when she was 18 years, ago, 18 years old, he was a queen, and he was queen for 12 years. Um, and do you remember Cristobal Colón? 
This, this guy went to Isabel I de Castilla and said, I want to sail to the west to get to India. I need money, I need food, I need an army, I need everything to, to discover this, to, to get to the new world, sailing to the west. And he was the real game changer. This is a real home run. Discovered that the earth was, was round uh, and not flat. Discovered that there was a, new, a brand new world full of wealthy and, and future. And, and made the world change dramatically. This is a real home run. So, uh, 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 a really quick poll. Which one of these two examples do you think is the first venture capital home run? This one? Are you sure? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Is there any North American on the back? <laughs> okay. I, I do think this was the first real home run. Um, and, and let's continue. I just finished my claim, so I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through the, the theory behind uh, what, what is behind these two hatch, huge successes. Um, if, you read a lot of, if you read about venture capitalists and private equity, you will find that all the huge successes took place between boom and burst cycles, between wars, between um, huge leverage buyouts, between uh, non-credit situation and huge credit situation, like maybe today. Uh, the home runs was done, as I told you, normally before, uh, after wars, when Isabel I de Castilla uh, founded uh, Cristobal Colón, the Muslims were trying to conquer Spain. It was a real hard war. Isabel I de Castilla didn't have any money because they had to expend all the money in the army to, to reconquer the, 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 the Spanish territory, the Granada Kingdom. Um, do you think the main reason for these successes was uh, that they improved what existed? Obviously, they improved what existed. That's obvious. Uh, do they think they got small capital? They both had small capital. And even there was, the, uh, the Luis Sandangel was the first business angel in history, under my opinion. Paying money, or giving money to Cristobal Colón because Isabel I de Castilla didn't have enough money to, to fund him. Uh, meh. No. These two home runs has the same reasons behind them, but this is not the real important thing. The real reason why they succeeded is different. And, and I'm trying to, uh, today, do some uh, inference to get the idea behind this. Imagine you are Isabel I de Castilla, okay? And I am Cristobal Columbus, and I say, okay, you know what? I think I can manage to get to the India sailing to the West. And uh, Isabel I de Castilla, that was a clever queen, said, OK, let's make a market research. <laughs> Before investing in the company, OK, because I got a business plan, let, let make some mar let, let make a market research. How many expeditions did return? No. Mm. <laughs> OK, is the world flat? 90% of the people then thought that. 10% thought that the Earth was twice or three, third time, three times the, 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 uh, the distance between India and Spain and Europe. And, okay, if, if you sail to the West, what happened? You find dragons. <laughs> the hell? Uh, you know, it, it's a disaster sailing to the West. Okay, <laughs> uh, honestly speaking, if you were Isabel Primera de Castilla, how many of you would have given money for me? <laughs> Come on, raise your hands. No, probably no. This is a clear fallacy of security. As known expeditions return, there's no success. success. There's no a new world sailing to the west. The world is flat. Let's go though, to the 50s and to the computer markets. You can find here an IBM machine, an AVN computer, in a huge room. 
expensive, big, glass and case mainframes, difficult to operate, and only one company making money on computers. That was the situation in the 50s. Uh, and somebody said, if you don't manage to get prices below $25,000 per machine, there won't be a market for, the computer, for, for home computers. There's no room for computers in your houses. Okay, the, the common thing that happened in these two investments was that they didn't invest on predictions. And that's really, really interesting because there is an entrepreneurial fallacy that thinks that, okay, if you get a business plan and you get resources, you know, people, you get money, you're a politician, whatever, based on your predictions, you will have success. And this is a real fallacy. This is not true. Believe me, I have founded several different companies. I have had some success. I have had big failures, and all the failures took place when I did huge investment of time trying to figure out how the market will behave. Instead of going to the market and say, okay, this is a test, give feedback to me. That was the real difference. So in all the entrepreneurial uh, processes, you must reshape and learn from the market. Because there is a huge difference from the, your first idea to the idea you uh, finally get success. There's a huge, huge difference. But you know what happens when you go to a venture capitalist and say, you know what, I, I did this business plan. And I said I was going to get the, these milestones, but I went to the market and I failed. So I have reshaped my business plan. Give me, please, more money. <laughs> you know what happens? It's, it's uh, as, as uh, uh, funny as going to a bank today to say, give me money because I'm going to start up a company. It's the same. They don't agree with you at all. Uh, this is the rate of failure in venture capital firms today. I'm right now funding a venture capital fund. Uh, <laughs> it's <laughs> it's going to be hard, but you know, I'm like a little kid. <laughs> so I, 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 I'm very, very excited about get, getting this 0.6 success rate to my fund. What, what happens in, in this way of mindset that trust in business plans is that instead of investing in venture capital, uh, they invest in micro-private equity. And that's a, there's a big difference. Because you're not investing in a market, you're investing usually in an emerging market that is slightly, that there's a slight difference between two markets. Uh, you know what, every, every time you try to uh, industrialize a creative market, you usually fail. And this is what had happened in the venture capital market. It's a creative capital market. You have to be creative and, and you have to step over and reshape and, and do ideas uh, improve over the time and don't trust on business plans. Uh, how, how can you think that a business plan can manage these two statements? To look for India could make you find America. There's no business plan that can support this statement. And it's not worth being the first, but better taking advantage of resources. This is something that you can find in business plans usually, but nobody knows the secret sauce of, of, of doing it. And the secret sauce is just testing with the market and listening to the market and reshaping your idea. So it's necessary that the venture capital firms mind shift their minds, their minds, to get success. To avoid the fallacy of security when investing in startups, you should follow these uh, instructions, this methodology that is quite simple. It's the secret sauce, my giveaway for you today. That is, okay, don't think and write it down. Just go outside, try something, 
learn. And learn because when you try something, you expect something, but you normally get something terribly different. Learn why there was that different. Resave your ideas and go back to the point number one until you get success. This is the only secret sauce for succeeding when starting up. And if you're a venture capitalist, this is the only secret sauce to work alone with entrepreneurs and having success. Thank you.